Welcome back to Cut Daisies and Unicorns. This is a Phil and Steve edition of Cut Daisies and Unicorns, and we welcome you back to episode number two. Steve, how are you doing today? Oh man, I'm doing great. To be honest, can I be transparent? Of course. Oh man. We would expect nothing else okay. on this podcast. All right, so... Um, I didn't sleep well last night. Uh oh. Yeah. And then when we're shooting in the morning, that like compounds to. Mm -hmm. I'm already like, you know how the story goes that um, it's not the fall that kills you, it's a sudden stop at the end. <laughs> right. You know, so like if you're dreaming and you fell off a cliff, uh -huh. you're, you're not dying until you dreamt that you actually hit the ground mm -hmm. and then you're dead. Right. So there's no waking up from that. Um, but yeah, so for me, I don't know, just the way I'm wired, I'm a nocturnal being, right. um, which I mean, according to biblical lore, does not make me a good man, mm. you know, because you're restless. No, I mean, men love darkness oh. better than light oh, because their I deeds were just, evil. Or, right. You know, I mean, like, I, don't, I, I mean, you can't set all the things on the shelf, but I mean, like, but I feel like if I'm made, um, then how how in the world i mean it's nocturnal it goes back to points of origin i mean i've always loved when the sun goes down and so um yeah i have a hard time shutting my head off and yeah. so i was looking at the clock about 3 30 and uh thinking man you really need to rest um which actually brings me to just some ponderings yeah. that we can do today love ponderings that's what this uh ps is all about yeah <laughs> ponderings and soliloquies <laughs> i also liked the uh what is the ponderings and sorcery no you had something with sorcery <laughs> uh prophecy <laughs> prophecy and <In> sorcery, sorcery. <laughs> yeah yeah when everybody watches that teaser they're gonna i the look on your face when i said it right. was awesome it's priceless yeah um <laughs> But it, it gave me pause for, oh, hold it, typical Koble. Let me finish the story. So it's not the fall that kills you. It's a sudden stop at the end. For me, not even worried about it. It's not the not going to sleep that kills me. It's the having to wake up, like hard starts. Now, when I say I got up later this morning, recognize that I still was out of bed 7 45 8 o'clock most people who know me would say that what that really is is I mean they're like holy cow you get up that early I mean the uh tendency I had at my last job was to be in by somewhere between 11 and 1 so uh, but anyway um but yeah it gave me it, it gave me just a a moment to pause and say what do you think about motion and what do you think about stillness and um how many of us have I, we have of ourselves have we found that we are addicted to being in motion and yet motion is necessary to be able to navigate and make it through life so sure. um what do you what are your thoughts on motion well i tend to love motion I mean, really, when it comes down, I mean, I love motion in all senses. Like, not only do I like to be in motion, yeah. I like to move. Yeah. I like to be up. Uh, um, even, you know, my Apple Watch, right, it tells me you've been sitting too long. It's time to get up. Really? Right? Yeah. So even so you like once, once every hour, there's at least, if I'm sitting too long, it'll say, get up. Wow. It's time for you to stand because so, you need to move. An artificial intelligence mm -hmm. can recognize right. whether you as a uh, human being mm -hmm. have moved enough or not. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, of course, then they have it set on a move goal. And somewhere along the spectrum of technology, they decided that 10,000 steps was the ideal goal for movement. I don't know where that number actually came from. Actually, it's a fallacy. I've That's talked to my I, doctor about this. I was this. thinking that. Yeah. 
Yeah, my heart doctor, um, me, of course, as in Enneagram 9, looking for ways to slow down and rest. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I was doctoring for high blood pressure, and uh, he told me. I, I'm, he's like, hey, I want you to, you know, you need to walk. I'm like, all right, so how often do I need to walk? I'm like, you're, you're saying like every other day, right, Doc? And he's like, uh, not for you. I'm like, well, not for me. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, actually, I'm lifting all social or cultural minimums. I'm lifting any, like, limit of that on you. He's like, you can walk seven days a week, and you can walk fifteen to 20,000 steps a day. He goes, that would be ideal for your heart health. Wow. I'm like... <laughs> That's a lot of steps. That's a lot. That's that (laughs) is, uh, to coin a phrase, a buttload of steps. Sorry, parents with children in the room. Um, But yeah, so I found that what you know, I'm like, I got you know, I have the opportunity in my life that I can take as many steps as I like any day of the week, and I'm not going against doctor's orders. Okay. Well, I know for, for me, when I was running, you know, and I, I, for about, I was like a year and a half, I was running somewhere between like three miles and six miles a day. Right. And which it then took a toll. I mean, speaking of movement and the toll it takes, it took a toll on my Achilles. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. Which is the reason why I had to stop running for a specific period of time. But when I was running those, I would have 10,000 steps in before, um, before breakfast. Right. Which I was happy with. Right. I mean, I'm like, Hey, look, my watch is saying I've, I'm successful. (laughs) So so once again, we move into this place of, uh, artificial intelligence is letting you know as Uh a human being that you, that I'm successful. You've arrived. Hey, Phil, welcome to Uh success. Well, and they, they play it in, I mean, you, whether it's your phone or your watch, like, I mean, it, it, it like congratulates me on, on that movement. And so you're like, oh, I like the praise. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, there's something that's like wired internally. That's like, Hey, I like it when somebody says good job. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> me personally, when, when it comes to exercise, I I'm so anti exercise like i i've taken pride in being a couch potato um but i i hate exercise so much that if somebody praised me for doing a good job i'd just be like f you (laughs) now i i wouldn't say that out loud to people unless that's your internal it was bill clark or you know i mean but really i i'm just like now saying all of that do you realize how many steps it takes to walk a mile? I used to. Yeah, it's about 2,000. Oh, that's it. Yeah. For some reason I was thinking it was higher, but okay. Yeah. No, I Googled that just two days ago. All right. And, um, and because Amy and I have been walking, mm-hmm. and when you start walking for an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, now what we found out is that we can walk faster without Gypsy the dog. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got a little routine on that going on and, um, but yeah, so, I mean, like we're right at like four miles a day. Yeah. I, no, no, I, I, if there's a part of life that I'm supposed to enjoy about that, if you, if you're asking me, Cobal, are you happy about that? The answer is no, I'm not happy about it, but am I glad to do it? Yeah, because apparently, and I ha- haven't seen my doctor because of the pandemic. I mean, I got my medicines and my pressure's fine. So anyway, for all the uh, you, of those of you who are concerned about not the, you know, part of the fall where I actually splat, mm-hmm. but you're like, well, you don't got to be falling anywhere. Your heart's just going to go out, you know? So it's a question about the fall, though. So when you're dreaming, what I hear is that you actually never dream that you hit. Exactly, until you're, you're you dead. You only dream that you're falling, and that's usually when you get shook, shaken out of the dream. Yeah. So is that the truth? I mean, because I, I don't dream. I mean, I know I dream. I think that I have rapid eye movement, 
but I have something that's in, like I don't ever remember dreams. But your phone and your watch should mm-hmm. tell you whether you have rapid, rapid eye movement. Right. I don't wear my watch at night, though, but it would if... <laughs> <laughs> Sanitary confinements. Right. That's what this is. I really... Really. But no, that's what I understood. I understood that what was the the deal about the dream was is that when you wake up before you hit, then you're still alive. But if you dream that you're falling and you hit the ground, then bam, the end of that dream is, hello, I'm not alive anymore. Hmm. Is, or, this, is this taking us into like Nightmare on Elm Street with like uh, Freddy Krueger? Freddy, Freddy. <laughs> if you die Freddy. in your sleep, then you definitely aren't waking up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not waking up to the life that we know of what is being awake in mm-hmm. this humanity, but we don't know. I mean, we really don't know <laughs> right. what what the afterlife or, you know, the afterlife and what it like the form of presumption that comes from. I mean, there's a lot of speculation on that, but right, which I think we're going to get to eventually. Someday. We have a big topic on that. Yeah. Research has been done. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is uh this is a lovely Thursday morning. Wanted to let the listeners know, we've actually come up with a plan. We do. It's the plan that we'll stick to until we're not going to go with that plan any longer. Um, but the plan is, is we're next Tuesday. Now, Phil, do you have a calendar? I do. Of sorts, somewhere? Yeah. Ah, reaches back for technology. And, um, so, uh, next Tuesday, which this is, this gets into our time travel thing. I'm telling you about next Tuesday today because it's Thursday, but we're not going to launch this podcast next Tuesday. We're going to get, it's going to be teaser Tuesdays where we're going to release our teaser videos um, uh, that we've recorded. Actually, we got uh, three, three teasers and a podcast uh, sitting on the shelf right now, ready to go. All, all edited out and looking pretty snazzy. And so then... On Thursdays every week, we get together, uh, not only as the hosts of the podcast, but also with John, our producer intern. Thumbs up from John. Just wait until we get like the iPad sitting here on a shot back to you, John, so that you can make faces at everybody and be in camera for it, too. (laughs) Um but on Thursdays when we get together, I think we're going to uh, push release. So somewhere around 11 a.m., uh, you'll get, be able to grab onto the release of whichever podcast we're on. And then um, as we shoot the new podcast and a trailer for the next week, we're going to just get in the cycle and we're going to rock and roll. We are. Yeah. And, it, and it's coming. The train is going down the track and there's no stopping it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And a new mantra for Cut Daisies and Unicorns, the time is now. We've been talking about this. Right. The inception, the formation, all that's been going on, we've been talking about. But the time is now Now. eminent. I'm so glad that uh, there's spell check in Word or on your computer at any other place because I couldn't spell eminent if I wanted to. I think it starts with an I. It is. I M M. E-N, E-N-T, eminent, I think. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife's the speller. She, is she? Uh, yeah, because her, her uh, background is English. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For secondary ed, but her, her uh, I believe her degree is in English. Hmm. And then secondary education. Wow. Yeah. Well... When we need a on-the-go spell checker, mm-hmm. Heather's our call. There we go. All right. We can just knock on the wall. <laughs> so what things in your life do you find drawing you, drawing uh, motion, uh, drawing you into motion? Um, when I think about motion, I also think about energy. What, what things do you put energy into? What things are um, gaining your focus that creates a movement or motion within you. Well, I even think about um, 
physics, right? I mean, physics would say that uh, an object in motion, you know, is always going to be in motion. Like, there's that motion that can't just automatically just be cut, right? Yeah. If you're in motion, you're going to continue forward in that motion. So that's the good thing about the motions in your life. Like, you're going to continue to kind of move until you make that kind of concerted effort to really just stop and say, you know what, it's time to rest. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, um, I think it was eighth grade, Mm -hmm. um, we had a science fair, and I created an inertia balance. Mm. And so um, took some old, long, like, um, steel shelving. You know how they have the crossbars that make them sturdy? I took the crossbars off of that and, and made um, a box. And then I ran some tests that if you started the balance um, and it was in motion, you could tell how much an object weighed based on the time of the swing hmm. as well as the distance of the swing. Yeah. What and grade were you in? I think eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty advanced, I think, for eighth grade, isn't it? Eh, Are you a genius? A, no, 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 no. <laughs> there's a, And there was a little box with cards that you could pick out like a project that you would do. Oh. I mean, this is totally not... Um, I had not even come close to the pondering, Steve. Uh, um, and so, but yeah, then... Um, the science teacher was with me as the judges came around and stuff like that. And they, they, they liked the display. They like, you know, all of these things. And I think that they were even taken back with this kid's in eighth grade. And I did a supersize. So I think the thing asked for like hacksaw blades, but I didn't have hacksaw blades. Yeah. And so, and the swings were like rapid, you know, with, but <coughs> I made it longer um, and, and so I had this really cool thing and it would just swing. And then I, <laughs> my dad had this old, um, scale, yeah. uh, from the store that his dad had owned. And so I took the weights from that. So I knew what the weights were and then with the measurement, and then I could put any object because I had my grid of what the time was for the swing of a half a pound, one pound, five pounds. And then I could be able to take that number and be able to figure out, based on the time in the swing and it was that was the energy of motion and movement but the the um the judges asked me a question of what does the word inertia mean mm. and i didn't have the answer oh no it cost me a grand <laughs> prize oh. the grand um my my uh, science teacher came back and he's like dude you had grand prize on lock until you didn't know what the word inertia meant oh no yeah. So but, do you know what it means now? No. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the other thing <laughs> that is going on about that whole thing is, um, I mean, really, I mean, yeah, it would have been cool to be able to, you know, have grand prize or whatever. And me, I'm just check it off the box and like, all right, let's move on. I have no idea what's going just on. Just give here. me a good grade. I don't care come about grand Come on. Prize. Come on. <laughs> That's exactly it. But, I mean, and to your point, I mean, there's a practical applica- uh, application of life. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at life and figuring out how do you navigate this? How do you watch and see what's going on around you and, right. you know, working on all of that? Um, and yet what I find I was hoping that when we started talking about motion, I was hoping that one of the greatest things that we I was hoping that you knew about physics because mm. me, I'm just when you at, am I brilliant? No. No, I don't even remember things that I should remember. <laughs> so, I mean, most of it's easier, easily forgettable. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm one of that, um, in that realm of like, I know a little bit about a lot. <laughs> so am I, a, you know, gene, you know, no physics. I still didn't do 
very well like in high school <laughs> but there's enough that stuck in my head about the I mean so I think when you're thinking about motion as well there's a lot of things um, that are alive that are in motion that aren't human yeah. so you think about bodies of water that are in motion that's and, exactly where right. my head went right and yeah. to think about the motion I mean to rhyme the motion of the ocean the motion of the river the motion of the lakes there's always movement in there, and it's yeah. carrying things along. Yeah. Um, and it'll, I remember, you know, going out to uh, California. Yeah. We, when we lived in Arizona, we would make trips to vacation over in, in uh, California quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And going to the ocean, there were certain times and opportunities that the lifeguards on the ocean would say, hey, you can't go out um, or you can't go out past a certain point because there is an undertow. There's a movement that they can then sweep people under. People have been lost yeah. because of the motion of the ocean. Yeah. It's really an amazing thing when you think about it. And I actually, Lake Michigan is very similar. They'll, they'll put warnings out and say there's no swimming today. Right. Um, and even on this side, what I found really interesting in Illinois is I, I don't remember that in Michigan, um, ever having signs or postings of that you couldn't swim or, um, but here in Illinois, they don't even allow you to swim at your own risk. Hmm. I mean, they, they post, I, I've been down at the lake and the lifeguards are in the chairs blowing whistles at people who are saying now we know i mean you know seven eight foot waves and and then to your point the undertow and the coldness of the water and all of those things so yeah yeah um so you didn't tell me though the answer to my question oh, yeah. which one <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> just go just keep moving on i know so what things do you find in your life that are pulling you into motion or into action um, and then I've got a follow up to that. Yeah, I think for for me, when I'm thinking about the motion um, and emotion in life right now, I think it's the. I I always like to explore things that aren't uh, that aren't known, or at least not known to me. Ah. <laughs> and I think that's often what carries me into a motion that says, "Hey, like." What I don't know right now, like I'd like to know. I mean, and that I think that goes back to me being like I have a, a, a some knowledge across the board in a lot of different areas, but it doesn't. It's not always in every area taken to a further depth. So, are are you a fan of trivia? I like trivia. You like like going to trivia sure, nights, yeah. and trivia nights, yeah, stuff like that. Uh -huh. I what I'm fascinated about within my own life is how many people that are in my close circle or have been mm -hmm. are trivia nuts. Yeah. I think it Chris Thompson, Nick Pranger, mm -hmm. Autumn Rupke, RIP, mm -hmm. um, you know, and stuff like that, but I mean, right. as you talk, I'm like Phil is a guy to take with you to trivia. Right. And there's, I mean, of course, certain subjects over others, but, uh, well, yeah. that, you know, like you, you, you want to have subject experts for different areas, yeah. things that people are absolutely a little bit more knowledgeable in yep. than others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think so when you were, so I'm not trying to ignore the question. No, that's no, no, no. Oftentimes what can happen if I'm I focusing on myself. Yeah. <laughs> But, but what I would say currently, the things that I don't, I mean, we're, we're looking at a lot of things for the podcast. Right. So whether it was the technology surrounding it, whether it's the, you know, the, the avenues for where are we going to put it, where's it going to go, how, you know, video, audio, all those different uh, areas. And when we have the camera set up, we, have, yeah. So all of that is like a learning process. Like, I mean, the cameras for me, I mean, I've been doing some podcasting, but yeah. on a much smaller scale. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but with that, just thinking about all the areas that I don't like this brings to me some motion okay and why it's like hey i mean this is a new year 
it's time to kind of take that momentum, that movement. Now mm. is the time. Now is the time. Yes. And why? Because I feel like there is that movement. There's that motion that is also carrying us. Yeah, nice. So, so that's something for me. And really, it's in- inquiry or um, you, you like to discover you like the adventure of discovery. You're also, you enjoy the student side learning. Oh, yeah. Um, and you like gaining um, more in, do you feel like, is it about the knowledge of what's going on? Or do you feel like that what you're finding um, taking place that as you you grow in knowing other things that it's an embodiment of living greater than what you've been. Hmm. That's a good question. Thank you. That's, that's, that's some depth, which is what you usually do. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think it's a great question that our audience could be able to ask themselves, Uh, you know, and, and that's why I pose the question. It's kind of like the big why, right? Like, why do you want, well, why are you in motion? Mm-hmm. What's the purpose of the motion? What um, oh, the, Just because you're in motion doesn't mean you're accomplishing anything. Oh, yeah. And is the goal to accomplish or is the goal to be? And so in, I, I guess the softball kind of lofted, you know, even your way is mm-hmm. that um, do you find a satisfaction in being in the expansion of becoming more than you are. Hmm. So as you're navigating life and it's the pursuit, you, I mean, I think the first thing out of your mouth, I mean, I have short term memory issue. <laughs> it's only because I like to forget right. and then I don't have to deal with the <laughs> details of it. Repercussions. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think your first statement was, um, that you like being in motion. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I couldn't disagree with you, mm-hmm. um, on that. I find myself spun into motion, um, not necessarily out of own choosing, but just because it's a, it, it's a place that I find comfortable is to, to be in motion, to be active. Um, and yet, I mean, as, as much as that's one thing, I, I think my wife just laughs at me because, man, if I get home after a full day of motion, I can really be committed to being a couch potato, hmm. you know, just sit, sit on the couch and the dog curls up next to me and I'm watching TV for the next four hours mm-hmm. when I could have been writing a song, writing a poem, putting hmm. my thoughts down on paper, or that moves us into as much as motion is a part of our life, what place in our lives do we find space for stillness? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's basically a juxtaposition between the two thoughts in regards to that. Um, and I think it was in my sleeplessness last night um, that as I started going through some meditative practices, uh, to quiet my mind and things like that, that I just uh, started looking at the two forces. Um, and isn't it interesting how that stillness, even in itself, is still in action? Oh, yeah. And so. Yeah, so, I mean, because you're, you, to me, you're getting to a place, and this is the, uh, like, stillness is uncomfortable for me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Which is the reason why I said I like motion, but sure. um, and it's not even always just motion. Like I, I can't sit down because I, I, I like to also you know watch movies or yeah. documentaries, television, whatever. Yeah. But it, it's also in that same like because I want to continue to engage in something else. Like I want my head to engage in whatever it is that I'm watching. Yeah, and that's another. But that's another motion thing. Mm-hmm. So stillness solitude quietness like i have a hard time yeah i have a hard time like all right can i in this practice just not do anything or not think like i i have a hard time yeah i mean i've I've tried like some breathing exercises Mm -hmm. you know i've i've listened to a couple of people you know like try to do that 
and and I and I try to do that, especially when I become a little bit more restless, especially getting to nighttime, mm-hmm. and trying to also get that to shut down, like my head. It's it's a hard place. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I know both of us are <clears throat> continuing to pursue. Um, it's not only physical health, but it's um, mental health. Um, healthy practices in our own lives. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, uh, so with that, then we end up being left with space where other things may consume our time. Mm -hmm. Um, And that in that empty space, then we're faced with just the realities of what's floating through in the meta conversations of our minds and, Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so, (laughs) Why we even speak this stuff out loud to folks and, uh, and as you're listening to the podcast is um, really I bring this to the table so that you can realize that you're not alone. Um, that the things that you find yourself in, mm-hmm. um, these are common experiences within the human experience. And, um, and, and it, it, it's okay in the navigation of it. Um, and I, I think that just one of the things that we would like, you know, uh, for a conversation to rise to the top is that uh, people would pursue relationship to be able to have other people to talk to about these things. And, um, and, and maybe even fodder, you know, uh, hopefully for those of you who are uh, single out there, you'd be able to uh, find some friends to be able to sit on around uh, a table, break bread together, uh, have dinner, and, um, and 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 you don't even have to give cut daisies and unicorns the credit for it. I mean, really, just throw it out there. Hey, what right. do you think about motion? What do you think about stillness? Um, finding out what other people do and practice in their lives um, for the practicing of both. That there's an intentia- intentional. Um, p- part of that. Um, and then also, I mean, I'm so broad on the spectrum of it doesn't always have to be intentional. For me, part of the spontaneity of life is to be able to take the unintentional and to enjoy it in the experience in a way that as it's taken in, then it, then it has a purpose, purposeful point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but I was, I was just thinking, I mean, when I was talking before about, um, you know, running, yeah, I, I always, I, so I, I recognized like almost this unintentional. So I was running mm-hmm. three to seven mile, whatever. Yeah. And it affected me even when I didn't want it to. <laughs> and there was like this unintent, you know, like my, Achilles, I had a bone spur, it cracked, you know, the doctor says, yeah, can't run. So mm. like there's this uh, unintentional break in what happened mm-hmm. and what was happening, the movement that I was making yeah. and running and all kinds of stuff. And then it was like, now you can't do it. Yeah. And guess what? You also can't do anything else either because your foot's going to be in one of those air cast things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so that's like, it's, unintentional yeah but it also leads me to think more about what it is that actually was making health and you know i got stuck in a in a habit right in a loop and it was probably good for my heart and all that others but apparently not the rest of the body i mean my achilles didn't agree right (laughs) yeah so no, I mean it's all fair. Right. I mean unintentionality comes in and you're like, okay, some this isn't going to you know, this isn't the direction I'm supposed to be, you know, continue to carry out. Yeah. And I think the uh the $500 word of the day is pivot. Mm-hmm. You know, you had to you had to take the information that you had at the time and you had to pivot and change right. uh what your plan was and then you had to deal with uh within you um, that it, you, you had to change what you really wanted to do and what you had been doing. Right. Um, yeah. Stillness. I, I think we talked about in one of the teasers that stillness, uh, is 
probably one of the things forced on humanity and the human experience um, because of the pandemic. Right. Um, and I have found just really a great um, discovery uh, in some of the old meditative practices, um, whether it's, you know, been from um, just sitting and having the TV off and no external stimulation going on. Um, oftentimes in the studio, when um, I go into the studio for a project during the day, um, <clears throat> I've got a TV there and a DVD player and stuff like that where I listen to um, concerts and watch TV shows or movies. But I'll just commit to the first 45 minutes. And even though I'm in motion, I've eliminated stimulation. Mm -hmm. um, some of the people know I mean, I'll probably be picking up more on Facebook interaction because of our launch and stuff like that with uh, cut daisies and unicorns. But the reality is, is that um, I've gone away from social media um, and, you know, and then just I think that, that there's a part of you have to question your input what are you bringing in for consideration? And so, and, and people will say, well, I'm not a reader. Okay, well, listen to a podcast and have it stimulate your mind and, you know, get in contact with another human to be able to discuss and think through. And, um, you know, and anything that we say, oh my gosh, don't put it in your backpack and carry it for the rest of your life. I mean... <laughs> It's just meant for a momentary consideration and then move on, you know, right. whether it changes your action or direction, that's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, and um, yeah, Dr. Hillary McBride too, um, of all of the liturgist work that's out there, I found um, not only her voice soothing, but um, just the aspect on how she thinks through things. So her meditative um, kind of walkthroughs I found beneficial and uh, a, a unique experience. Um, and then I would point people in the direction of uh, Father Richard Rohr, uh, Franciscan, uh, who, um, oh my gosh, there's so many things. And actually, I'm right in the middle of reading the book, The Naked Now, mm. um, which is uh, contemplative practices of the early uh, desert fathers and des desert mothers. And so... Mm -hmm. Um, it's so funny how the older I get, the further back that my path is taking me into points of origin of spirituality and what it means to uh, interact in regards to a divine presence and, um, and be able to fit that. And I have my own biases, you sure. know, of how I look through uh, the lens of what that looks like. But I can really appreciate leaving a vagueness on the path uh, in regards to that so that people who are from different faith types and different walks uh, would be able to embrace the opportunity to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And my view, this is my humble opinion, is the supreme deity um, that I believe is working out what it would desire will be at work to work with all people on all paths to come to the place of realization that it is the supreme deity. And so for those of you who are really concerned about this language, <laughs> just go with me for a moment. <laughs> Consider that generalness gives room for a, sp a specific move. And if I begin the work to take myself off of the altar or elevation to the throne that God should look like me, what I do when I take myself off of that throne is I allow for a deity that is beyond my understanding to move in a way that it so cho chooses. And, um, and the speak of, uh, the lack of gender is purposeful. Right. Um, and, and, and in its purpose, 
it's not meant to take away any of the foundational truth, but it's meant to give room so that all who are considering what is going on on their path would have an open door to be able to consider. And I can trust that this deity is working in ways that I have no way to comprehend. Mm -hmm. So that's my soapbox. <laughs> yeah, it probably leads people be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Right. But the journey, it, you know, it, it's about the journey and the journey and bringing, you know, and, and each each person has their own journey. And it's, and it's a journey of discovery, both um, of self, but of things outside of self. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that um, if, if we are going to embody that which is outside of us, which I believe occurs, mm -hmm. um, then there are three specific motions of deity that I wish to embody. Um, the first, as I feel that I have received, is grace. The second, I would put, would be a sense of peace. And the third, which is the greatest of these, <laughs> is love. love. And so, um, you know, in that, what I believe is this supreme deity has acted in that way toward me so that I can act that way toward others. Right. And that's the motion that I want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get caught up in the numbness of just going through the actions or checking things off the list, but that the motion that is moving in to me and out through me is grace, peace, and love. And so it's interesting how right. these things come together. Hey, you know, uh, one of the things in the evolution, mm -hmm. again, a word that some people probably don't like, but sure. I'm going to bring it up because we are evolving in our own story of cut daisies and I wanted to say dandelions. <laughs> That's a weed. <laughs> Cut daisies and unicorns. Um, is um, in our origin story. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about how when I said, let's make it weird. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, as we head into our second episode, you, you are knocking it out of the park, dude. You've come up with the weird moment of our day. Oh, yeah. And so as we move into this section... Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to take time for Phil to present the weird moment of the day. Yeah, I think that there's there's a segment that we could do <laughs> on our PS episodes uh -huh. that we would say, and now a weird moment. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, it is. Right. Well, and maybe even on like when we have guests, we can ask guests as there, people are discovering this and watching it and stuff right. like that. They can think of their weird moment they want to share or whatever. Yeah, so here's the weird moment. <laughs> All right, and I and I and I showed I'm, Steve. I'm, I'm prepped and ready for right, this. Right? Yes. But yeah. He he knew about this one. The last one, the last episode. I didn't even tell him. If you're on the treadmill, listening to this right now, um, right. let me just tell you, uh, you need to stop because when this comes out, you will find yourself stumbling. But oh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So I was on, uh, and and this was a neighborhood app next door. And next door is, I mean, I think everywhere in the nation right now, you know, you just have to find it and then plug it into your particular neighborhood. But in the city of Chicago, because there's lots of people and because there's lots of people in this segment of our neighborhood and in Albany Park, that um, there's lots of activity on there. Yeah. So I just happened to come across, and I, I don't go on there very often. Usually it's, you know, my wife saying, hey, you know, there's something on there you should check out. By the way. <laughs> right. But I came across this, uh, this post, and it said, birds are not real. And I was like, what, like, what is this? 
This fits perfectly into suspending reality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Lot, lots of suspension of reality here. So I was like, what do you mean birds aren't real? <laughs> and so there's this actual you know, website. It's called birdsaren'treal.com. And they have a, a whole history that um, back in, let me try to go back uh, just to give you a brief understanding of this, but back in the 50s, I, oh, actually, nope, 1947 is when the CIA was founded. So yeah, it was in the 50s that um, the people were, the CIA was worried because these birds were making a mess on their car. <laughs> So these birds that were real at some point in time, they were making a mess on their car. And they, so, they, so they said, we're going to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> because they also, as the CIA and other governmental authorities, also like to be able to spy, right? Yeah. So we know that they're keeping an, uh, an ear to the ground listening to things that are happening now this is what they say they say they then came up with the plan to exterminate the birds all of the birds all of the birds and then put into the technology every bird being a surveillance so the birds that are flying around yeah are the surveillance drones and they're picking up hmm. things that are happening around them. So, <laughs> so this is, I mean, so some, you know, and, and just looking, they have, a, they have a Twitter account, Instagram account, all of that stuff. And of course, they're selling merchandise because all the great uh, T-shirt mer merchandise that they have out there as well. But... Um, they had a news story because they put out, and I think it said it was Nashville or something. But uh, what they said was, um, we put this billboard up so that people would know that birds aren't real. So that if once they knew that birds weren't real, <laughs> then they could really get into, you know, as they said, sharing this gospel. <laughs> the gospel of birds aren't real. Well, and we, 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 that's where you and I would say words matter. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is gospel, um, in, in the Greek just means good news. Oh yeah. Go gospel doesn't like the word gospel isn't, um, set aside on a shelf and can only be used for, uh, people who follow Jesus the Christ or, uh, who proclaim themselves to be Christians or, you know, anything like this. And so, right. um, so for this group of people, hmm. they have good news to share. They do. And the good news is? Birds aren't real. And the good news in that is that if we start to recognize that the government is surveilling us, you know, even going back to, you know, Big Brother 1984... Yeah, um, I lived through that year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, that whole Big Brother concept—that um, that if we're aware of the government surveilling, then we can have more of an opportunity of not being known to them. If we're figuring out all the ways in which they're trying to surveil us. Hmm. So they even um, had this uh, the, the way that their story. Um, was at least, I mean, I'm assuming it's constantly being rewritten um, or added on to, but they said even in, uh, so 2016, President Trump announced that if he was elected, he would build a wall between Mexico and the United States. Now, you may believe mainstream media about this being an immigration issue, but what they say is that the wall is actually being encapsulated with microwave guns. They can track any bird that enters the United States and then shock it. You know, I mean, like it, it'll ultimately kill the birds that are coming in. Right. The real ones that might be left. Yeah. Coming in, then they can take over those birds, send them out and say, now they're tracking devices. Wow. <laughs> 
So that's the story. It it gets weird. <laughs> so what we're committing to today and um just want to let everybody know that as you hear about this, um, we're, we're going to reach out. We're trying. And even though um, we're not hugely, like we don't have a huge following yet because this is just our release date. Actually, I just turned on uh, the Facebook page yesterday, mm -hmm. um, updated some of the logo work, and now posted the first post on our Facebook page. Hey, we're in, we're in the studio taping. And then, um, yeah, starting to get the word out. So we'll be, we'll be hitting up all those things. Although I found it very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, cut daisies and unicorns came up in my Instagram feed last night. We already have 20 followers on Instagram <laughs> just from posting that. And so, um, we're going to, we're going to figure out how to mesh all this stuff together and, and, and get it working out but we're going to reach out and see if we can do a zoom call with a spokesperson from birds, birds aren't, real. aren't real and um just kind of head down that path right yeah because we may not uh we may not get that the you know whether i mean because some people are saying throwing and say well this is satirical but i suspect that they would also look at it and say, eh, this isn't satirical. There may be some people who are following this path and saying, no, like this actually could be. Well, and where I, the question that I really want to find out about this is how the progress of um, technology yeah. has brought it into into change I do think a very interesting point is we already know that we're being under surveillance oh, yeah. <laughs> by the information that's being sold from any of our phone devices mm -hmm. um, Alexa Siri eh, TVs eh, it, it's, it's all listening we're, we're being listened to for sure all the time um, and so I, I'm just wondering about, I have one difficulty and that is when birds hit a window and die, mm -hmm. whenever I've seen that happen, they've not been mechanical. Mm. Now to fill the gap with trust, what I can understand is the wall has not been completed at Mexico. I would also be concerned about the northern migratory birds mm -hmm. between Canada and the U.S. Exactly. And so the reality of saying, well, obviously the birds that don't go into windows are the drone robotic birds because their technology is superior and they wouldn't fly into a window. Mm -hmm. So you're never going to have evidence of that. Or... Is it that they are also saying, I mean, like, they have to, you know, play dumb every once in a while just so that nobody gets on their trail? Maybe these birds and the technology of it is that if it does hit a window, it actually just dissolves and you can find just like the out, the external. The exoskeleton. Right. Being something that actually just melts all of the evidence of... Uh, <laughs> And I just wondered if they were able to inject real birds with right. listening chips and stuff like that because of how things have gotten so advanced. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. Well, that's a weird moment for the day, that's everyone. A weird moment. And uh, actually, we're going to wrap up episode two. All right. And uh, we're going to call this good for the go. Good to go. Yeah. So if you're listening to episode two, where can they find us, Phil? We are on YouTube at Cut Daisies and Unicorns. We, as Steve just mentioned, our Facebook page is live, Cut Daisies and Unicorns. We're also on Instagram and Twitter under the same exact name. So Cut Daisies and Unicorns is exactly the places where you can hit us up. Um, 
podcast wise audio will be across any of your uh, favorite audio um, places where you get your podcast currently so you can find us there as well um, we um, the video itself will be homed at uh, the YouTube site though yeah yeah and if you want to interact with us we've really committed to not giving you our phone numbers but you can get a hold of us by sending an email to cut daisies and unicorns all spelled out at gmail.com and uh, we'd look forward to your exchange and interaction and just know that if you have other ideas of some really weird things out there then we're really open because once again in motion phil loves to learn more things oh yeah yeah and, and especially weird things weird, I love things. weird things he loves weird things and uh which again may be a sign of our friendship thank you <laughs> thank you for loving me phil and uh and so with this we'll say thanks for joining us we're really happy to be on this journey together and hopefully you found some of this conversation beneficial if not hang out for the next episode and uh just like the siren in the background we also are saying goodbye take care everybody